All right. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is our first MLS Live, and so we're really happy to see you here. My name is Man Favre. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, in May, I'll be celebrating my 10-year anniversary with the Massachusetts Library System, and I've held several positions with MLS over the years, but currently I am the Membership and Bibliotemps Manager. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Sarah. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Sigigian, she, hers, Executive Director at the Mass Library System. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, since this session is uh, being held online, a singular land acknowledgement does not capture the distribution of MLS and our members across many locations in the Commonwealth. As MLS has two offices in Massachusetts, we would like to acknowledge the Nipmunk people of Marlboro and Northampton, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations who cared for and continue to cultivate the land and resources that we benefit from today. We invite you to consider your own position with regard to the land where you find yourselves. Hmm, excuse me, and I'd pass it back to Amanda. All right, so today, Sarah uh, will be discussing our plans for 2021, including a review of our new action plan, um, which was written in support of our strategic plan, which is also new. Um, I've put, I'm putting, should say, a link to both in the chat. Um, so if you haven't seen them, you can pull them up or take a look at them later on today. There we go. All right, so we've prepared a series of questions uh, to guide the conversation, but that doesn't mean uh, you can't ask questions and we actually would really love for you to ask questions. So if you have questions, put them in the chat, everybody's muted. Um, and that is because these are being recorded and they're gonna be posted later on to YouTube and Vimeo. So we wanna make sure that the audio is okay. Uh, we will try to save some time at the end for general questions. So if you have questions that don't have to do with the action plan, you can ask those as well. Um, we'll save them to, for the end. If we run out of time, we'll still answer your question, um, but it might be in a follow-up email. All right, so Sarah, do you wanna give a quick introduction? I'd love to, thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, this is a really, as Amanda mentioned, this is an exciting time for us. As you may remember, 2020 was a strategic planning year for MLS. We're pleased to have seen our plan voted and approved late last year, and we got to work quickly on our new action plan. The action plan is a different tool for MLS. We've never really had one like this before. It's designed to help us keep on track with our plan and give us specific actions to focus on in support of our strategic initiatives. Both documents can be found linked on our website, masslibsystem.org in the announcement section. And as Amanda mentioned, she also put it in the chat for you. So to recap, our three strategic initiatives are, MLS ensures that services are sustainable, prioritize member needs and equitably serve all member types. MLS empowers leaders to emerge at every level of library service, connecting staff throughout the stages of their careers. And MLS will take the lead in facilitating important conversations and support member-facing initiatives focused on DEI. And for us, that includes diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and social justice work. So for today's session, I'd like to share with you some highlights from this plan. Some some of the actions we've already started working on, while others will include a bit of research and development as part of that action. This plan will run for 18 months, so we're at the beginning of what I know will be a substantial amount of work, but it's very exciting and we're looking forward to using this tool to help us frame our work and conversations. Uh, so before I continue on, Amanda, are there any other questions that I can address? Um, not from the audience. Do you want to get right to the questions I have for you? Sure. All right. So first, yeah. do you want to explain how the action plan will evolve through the next couple of years? I'd love to. So as I mentioned, this is a new new tool to MLS. I mean, uh, certainly the strategic plan is something we have always had on a three to four year basis. Every every three, four years, we go through a strategic planning process that takes about 10 months and we include the members and partners um, and stakeholders within those conversations. And we just finished our last one in 
wow, in November of 2020. Uh, but this time we decided to take it a step further and create an action plan. And because of the way our years are um, set up, we're on a fiscal year basis, meaning that we our, our year runs from July 1st to June 30th. However, with our strategic plan and our um, the way annual meeting works, uh, it's calendar. So it's a little confusing. And that was really a piece of what uh, prompted me to do our first action plan for a year and a half. So this is rather unique in that this first action plan will run from January 2021 to June of 2022. Uh, and from then on, we'll have um, fiscal year action plans so that they will be 12 months long. So there's a little bit more within this action plan because we have a little bit more time. Um, and again, it's set up um, so that we can, um, we have a sort of a roadmap, if you will, for the work that we'll be doing over the next year and a half. Um, we will build our next action plan upon the previous year's action. So one will be um, the building blocks to the next. Um, and of course, um, we really, of course, all learned this in the past year, but there will be room for adaptation and growth. Certainly member and partner input as we go along, that's going to be very important to us. And one of the ways that we're going to start encouraging those conversations on a more ongoing basis to, is to ensure that our reports from MLS out to the community will follow in line with this action plan. So you'll be hearing from us on a, on a regular basis about our um, work towards these actions. It won't be something that you'll get only at the end of the year or in 18 months, they'll say, you know, here's what we've done. Uh, we will be constantly communicating with the members about this work uh, with acknowledgement to the fact that there are some things out of our control uh, and that, that could impact um, some of the action, action plan as we move forward. All right, thanks, Sarah. Yes. Um, so my next question is about strategic initiative one, mm -hmm. uh, which is MLS ensures its services are sustainable, prioritize member needs and equitably serve all members. So this is a multi part quest or, or it's a question about this that has multiple parts. So the first part is, can you clarify clarify what you mean by sustainable. Sure, and I do just want to take a note to remind our audience that. Um, MLS is multi-type. We have uh, sort of four types of libraries uh, that we serve. They're academic, public, special, and school libraries. Uh, so when we talk about all member types or multi-type, those are the four types of libraries we're, we're, we're talking about. But in terms of sustainability, in this case, it refers to financially sustainable uh, services at the, at the foremost. It's important that our core services that we offer remain funded um, before we work to add additional services, because we know all of you, our members and their communities rely heavily on our core services, and we're committed to ensuring the funds for them as best we can. All right. And so second part of this is yeah. um, the second goal under this initiative mentions strengthening partnerships. Mm -hmm. Can you give a couple examples of partnerships MLS currently has that you would like to see strengthened or utilized? Sure. So um, MLS does partner with several organizations, both within the library world and the greater community. One of the ones that we've had really since the very beginning is our work with the Mass Higher Ed Co Cooperative, sometimes known as MHEC, to offer member discounts on everything from Mylar book covers uh, to moving services. It's a really great uh, partnership that was developed early on in MLS's existence, and it has really um, done a lot of uh, good work for our members, helping them save money on the things that they need most. Uh, so we're really proud of that um, connection that we have with MHEC. Uh, we also work with partners on grant opportunities that benefit our members. So one that we had recently was a, a, a sponsorship, if you will, from uh, the I'm sorry, it wasn't a sponsorship, it was a grant that we received from the Manton Foundation. And that was um, money set aside very specifically to help support our small libraries uh, in Massachusetts. So we were able to provide some customized training opportunities to them, also linked to a uh, recorded series of webinars for them to attend. And of course, our, our uh, really popular uh, Small Libraries Forum, which we were able to bring back after a few years um, of, of, of missing that event. Uh, it came back in 2020 uh, as a virtual opportunity and um, we couldn't really have done it without the Manton uh, Foundation support. So we're really grateful for that and looking forward to, to future opportunities with them and others. All right. also, oh, 
Oh, oh sorry. I thought. I got okay. More. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we also you'll you'll see a lot of our training events. Also, we work with partners on. So one example is other state entities like the Mass Department of Public Mental Health worked with them a few years ago in a series of trainings. And of course, our various IRA associations. We work with them on um, trainings, professional development, and advocacy work. And for the second part of that question, I'd like to see our partnerships uh, better utilized in two fronts. Two of the things that I'm looking forward to doing within this plan. Um, I'd like to better support the library associations in the work that they do, uh, and two, to connect and better define our work with the Board of Library Commissioners. So one of the, um, I think, strongest partnerships that we have is with the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, who are also our, our funding agency. But we complement each other so incredibly well with the services that we offer um, to provide just, just incredible opportunities to the membership at large. Uh, I'd like to continue that work. Uh, we've really, I think, uh, stepped it up, if you will, uh, in the past couple of years. And um, I think it, the benefits are just seen across, across the library community, and I'd like to continue that work. Um, they're a fantastic team with really, really great talent, um, and it only makes us stronger to do that. So. All right. Now the next question, yes. right? Okay. Yes, sure. <laughs> so the third goal under this initiative, um, designing new services to have the greatest statewide impact and adaptability to funding changes, yeah. how will this affect already existing services? Yeah, so um, it's it's that it's that balance that I'm sure all of you see in your libraries, you know, staying consistent with the services that you provide, but also giving room, giving time, giving resources to explore what's new, to bring something new to your community um, as a service. So for us, our core services, um, it's really important that these new services don't take away the resources needed from our core services. And when I say core services, um, I'm really talking about um, delivery, statewide delivery, uh, database access, training, consultation, um, CEC, the Commonwealth eBook collection. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing one more. <laughs> Amanda, help. What was the fifth one? Uh, did you say bibliotemps? I did not, but bibliotemps is certainly up there as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of different things that MLS offers as well beyond that, but those are the ones that we really know our members uh, rely on day in and day out. It helps their libraries function. So it's really important that we ensure that we have the resources to support those um, services. There's so much that MLS could do. And we need to remember our role as a service organization. Some of the work we'll be doing before adding any major service is an evaluation of existing services. So are there some not as utilized as they once were? Um, certainly the pandemic has completely thrown open the doors to, to lots of different variables and lots of di different options. Uh, but it's also important to remember that we're still in that pandemic. It, it's important to remember that while this uh, research and while this evaluation is necessary to not just be so quick as to change gears so quick, uh, quickly and lose something that we know our, our members are relying on. So are we the right organization to take on this service? So again, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have a lot of member organizations and partners that we work with um, on various services. And it's really important to both the success of our organization and the success of other organizations that we really try to identify who's the best to lead this service, who's the best to partner on service, and who's the best to support for whatever that service may be. How will this affect the services our members rely on? And do we have the financial and staffing capacity to succeed with this new service? So those are some of the questions we'll ask ourselves as we start talking about our existing services and anything new that may come along. All right, thank you. All right, it we're going to take a quick detour um, and give Sarah a little bit of a vocal rest. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just going to give you a quick news update about some things um, going on at MLS. Um, so just to tell you that, all right, so MLS Live um, will be held on the last Tuesday of the month. Each month, we will talk about a different topic. So you should mark your calendars for February 23rd when we plan to talk about 
what MLS is and how we differ from our partner organizations in the state. Um, and on the March 30th, that'll be our third MLS Live, we are going to take a deep dive in how MLS is funded. Um, and other dates and topics will be announced um, as we go along, um, but you should expect this to be on the last Tuesday of the month. Um, and if you want to stay informed about what's going on at MLS, um, we have started up a new monthly newsletter uh, and you can join the mailing list. I'm going to put the link in the chat. There you go. Um, we, we only send out an email once a month. Um, so if you join this list by checking off news and updates, you'll only get one message from us. Um, that'll go out. The next one goes out this Friday. Um, so if you join the list now, you will get the next newsletter. Um, and we also can't avoid acknowledging the reason that we are holding these meetings online, um, and that is the pandemic, um, which has forced all of us to alter our lives. Um, and we want to remind you about the really excellent resource that has been created by two of our staff members, Kelly Jo Woodside and Michelle Eberly. Um, and it's the COVID-19 Lib Guide. Um, it's a great resource for you, in particular if your library staff has been working remotely due to infection spikes in your community. You should take a look at their page called What Your Library Can Do Remotely. And I'm going to put the link for that in here. All right. And now, after that very brief detour, we will return to questions. All right, so we're gonna move on to strategic initiative two. All right, so Sarah, um, strategic initiative two, which is MLS empowers leaders to emerge at every level of library service, connecting staff throughout the stages of their careers. Um, does MLS have plans to expand their leadership and training offerings? We do. And I just wanted to echo Amanda's comment from earlier on. Um, don't hesitate to ask us any questions um, as we move through today. Please put them in the chat and we'll jump, we'll happily answer them as we go through today. So I, I we we encourage you to ask questions as we as we go through the MLS live. <laughs> but I, um, yes, uh, to answer Amanda's question about expanding leadership and training pro, uh, offerings, yes, we do. We recently completed a year long leadership research project, which uh, will help the consulting and training services team identify needed offerings. And we know that um, that we we know that there was a really strong structure for leadership. Uh, symposiums, trainings, uh, opportunities in the past. And we know that a lot of people miss those. We recognize the benefit that they had brought our library community and the potential for bringing them back. And that is something that um, we could potentially be working on with our with our partner organizations. So um, we're continuing to work with them, seeing how we can leverage our strengths to offer more comprehensive trainings on this topic. Uh, and I'll also say a quick note about Project Set. I know many of you have um, really enjoyed uh, either participating in Project Set or hearing from our graduates at annual meeting every year. Um, it's also right now going through an evaluation year. So Terry McQuown, our Consulting and Training Services Director, and Sarah Donnelly, our Project Set Manager, are working through um, uh, an evaluation year um, this year and probably will have hopefully some more information on next steps coming out later this year or into the new one. So that's also a part of the leadership work. All right. Yay, project set. Yay. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to strategic initiative three. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one says MLS will take the lead in facilitating important conversations and support member facing initiatives focused on inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and social justice work. Mm -hmm. um, and for the first goal, which is integrate the core values of DEI into MLS policies, practices, procedures, et cetera, and so on. Um, the action items mention hiring a coordinator slash consultant, and the measurement of success will demonstrate both increased resource allocation. If we circle back to strategic initiative one, mm -hmm. where you talk about designing services to be flexible, 
how will you ensure the financial survival of this initiative through all of MLS's funding ups and downs? Excellent, very good question. <laughs> um, and I'm sure many of you are wondering about that. So like many publicly funded institution um, institutions and, and many of yours, I'm sure you, you are familiar with this sort of the way budgets are set up. Uh, our budget changes every year. Sometimes it is increased, other times it decreases. The challenge is to find ways to continue to move forward while understanding that there are fun there that the funding we have may not be the funding we have six months from now. Um, so with this in mind, MLS is exploring the possibility of adding this position specifically mentioned in the actions, the coordinator consultant, um, as a contracted position, meaning there would be a definitive start and end time for the position. Of course, there will be uh, opportunity to develop the position into a permanent one should funding allow. Uh, but we are so uh, incredibly grateful for the recent increase that we saw to our fiscal 21 budget, which is our current budget year. Uh, and we know how important uh, it is to ensure that the funding is used to support the actions laid out in the plan. We'll have more information coming on this topic. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, this plan took, uh, started about three weeks ago, which sort of corresponded with when we got our final budget number. So there's a lot of different factors that are coming into play as we do this work. So uh, we'll have more information on if we're able to um, and how we'll be able to support this position. Uh, in a few months. So hopefully it's something I can address in a, in a, in a future MLS Live. But I do believe that uh, the work that, that we have in front of us um, to do can be and will be done better if we have uh, support both on our end at MLS, but also support for you as you and your libraries continue to do this work with your communities. There we have a great question from the audience. Awesome. Um, is DEI a part of the evaluation of the leadership programs mentioned in the previous initiative? Yes. So in my mind, DEI is not, well, and, and this really goes for all of them. So, but I'll start with the DEI piece. In my mind, DEI work is not exclusive in that it only belongs to this initiative. I believe it is internal to everything that MLS does, everything our libraries do. I believe that all of these uh, initiatives connect with the others. So when, yes, so when we talk about evaluation, not only will it be uh, included in the work for strategic initiative two, but it'll be included in all the evaluation that we do on um, not just leadership programs, but our CE programs, our consulting work, our, um, a CEC model, um, uh, excuse me, the CEC service that we offer, uh, we'll be using the a DEI lens to, to look at all of the services that we offer and identify ways that we can be more inclusive. All right, thank you. And thank you for that question and keep asking them. Um, so my next question for you is the action item, and this is we're still on strategic initiative three. The action item uh, associated with the second goal, following the lead of trusted experts, MLS will build awareness in using the tenants of DEI and library staff with library staff to identify and eliminate barriers to inclusive library services. It mentions a partnership with member libraries to create a DEI evaluation framework for member libraries. Will this be a project that representatives from member libraries can volunteer to participate in? Yes. So the the DEI audit is something that we've heard a lot about. Excuse me, I call it an audit, but it really should be evaluation framework. Um, it's something I we've heard a lot about from our members through the strategic planning year, things that they really wanted to focus on. And we felt that it was an important piece of something that we could offer assistance and support on. Um, so members will definitely be involved uh, with this process. It's not something um, that I think that we at MLS could create and just hand out. I don't know that that's the appropriate way to address this. Um, but I think that member member input and collaboration is, is going to be required for any of this to be a success. So working with each of you uh, individually as part of uh, the associations or other organizations, our network partners, they're all gonna come into play with this. Um, I do think that it is important that um, we should see if we can hire a consultant or coordinator first to help us begin this work. Because again, for me, funding and capacity levels and also appropriate experience is very, very important to me as we go forward on this work. So we wanna make sure we have um, the resources we need to see uh, a project come to, uh, 
to go successfully, the whole path to go successfully. So uh, there are some pieces that I think we need to focus on and get moving first, but certainly any of the work that we do uh, is only uh, is better because of the work we do with our members, the contributions from all of them. Um, and so I just have one final question. Um, and that is, can you tell us more about this project or any of the other projects that are accompanied with this strategic or action plan? Any of the, the projects that we talked the in the action plan? Yeah, if or? there's if there's oh. anything else you want to add oh. as sort of a conclusion okay. that we didn't get to like cover in the questions I had. Well, I guess one piece that I didn't really talk about is uh, our executive board. So we have an executive board at MLS that is made up of up to right now, I think it's 13, but we can have up to 15 representative from member libraries. They are your colleagues. Um, they are voted on every year at our annual meeting. Uh, we can find a list of our um, executive board contacts as well as the minutes from our 2020 meetings on our resource guide and I can share that link uh, with you. Um, they will be also keeping a close eye on this action plan. One of the pieces um, that uh, I had mentioned earlier that's really important is that um, we continually revisit the action plan. So they'll be seeing it on a monthly basis. We'll be reporting to them steps that we've taken to address these actions uh, as we move through the next year and a half. Uh, we'll also share those updates with the membership so that you can, you can sort of follow along. Um, but this, I want to assure folks um, that this is not, the intent is not to stick this in a drawer. This is a real living document that, that we all at MLS plan to be referring back to, using as we go through our work um, and, and seeing, uh, hopefully making uh, work towards complete, uh, at least addressing the actions, if not necessarily completing, because a lot of this work will be ongoing over the next four years. Um, but our, our executive board is very well aware of this and they're very, um, very supportive of this work. And so there'll be a, a, another partner that we'll have throughout it. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. So we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so I want to open it up to our audience. This is sort of your last opportunity to get any questions in if you want to post them into the chat box. In this session, we are always open to answering questions um, anytime you have them via email, phone, however you want to contact any of us. But yeah. All right. And I'm going to try and put, there we go. So I'm putting the link, as Sarah mentioned, to the executive board list in the chat, uh, if you want to take a look at that as well. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about this action plan. I think, um, I think we have a lot to do, but I think that it's a really great opportunity for us. And Let's see. I'm now going to just stare at the chat box. Oh, I have a question. Oh. Okay. Oh, no questions. Very nice compliment from one of our colleagues at MDLC. Just, just some thank yous. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much, everybody. Um, this again was our first one, so we appreciate your patience as we as we moved through it. Um, again, we'll be having more of them uh, next month. We'll have another one in, in um, the last Tuesday of February, and I hope you you can join us then. Yes. Um, all right. So oh, yes, awesome. yeah. they will be at the same time. So for now, um, we are planning to do them at eleven o'clock on the last Tuesday of the month. Um, and if we've only scheduled three right now um, to see if that time works for people, um, but so far I think we'll probably stick to that. Um, should we also, Patsy, you had a question. Yeah. If, um, if you wouldn't mind signing up for each of them so that you can be sure to get the right link. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So I'll just 
say my closing statements. Um, thanks for attending today's first MLS Live. Um, before we say goodbye for the day, uh, we want to acknowledge the staff of MLS and the staff at your libraries. Um, this has been a terrible year, um, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, but our staff, and I'm sure yours as well, have been working so hard uh, to pivot our offerings while also serving our communities. And we're so grateful to them and to you and for everything that you've managed or we've all managed to accomplish this year. So thank you. And finally, um, we'll be here again on February 23rd when we plan to talk about MLS um, and how we differ from our partner organizations in the state. Um, and we will see you soon. So thanks everybody for coming. Yes, thank you. Be well. Yes.